Welcome back to John's Films. Today we're going to learn to make a lower four thirds like that. To get started on my timeline, I'm going to click my effects library, go to effects on the left, and then choose fusion composition, dragging it down onto my timeline where I'd like to add my lower four thirds. Here I will make sure it's highlighted and I will click on the fusion page at the bottom. Here in fusion, we have our composition, but it doesn't look like much. We have about 150 frames to play with by default, and that's fantastic. That gives us at 30 frames a second, five seconds, which is plenty. Now, what do we need? Well, first, I'm going to start with a shift and a space and type in background. Background gives me something to look at and will provide a background highlighted on monitor two. If Fusion is new to you, the two dot here, the second one, means that it's in the second viewer. I have another viewer here on the left, and now you see they're in both. What are we going to do with our background? Well, we don't actually want to fill up the entire space because if we did that, we'd just fill up the whole screen. What we want to do is be able to render to a small area on the left here to do that. We're going to use some simple nodes, starting with the background node. With it highlighted, I'm now going to hit shift and spacebar and type transform. The transform node allows me to modify whatever I put into it. This yellow connector shows me that I have piped the background into my transform node, and I'm going to put that on viewer one from the transform node. The background I'm going to change. I think we should have some cool background colors. So let's start with, yeah, my kid would like that. All right, we'll go to transform. And here I'm just going to shrink down with the transform what we've got. I'm going to make it about a third of the screen wide, roughly. I'll make it, I don't know. Not too tall, sort of tall, maybe that tall. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to change its position here on the right using the center of it as a measurement. I'll go all the way over. Notice I'm looking to the right, which is my final media out, and I'm making sure it's off the screen. I'll pull down on the Y axis now, and that looks about the right height. So noting that my playhead, which is important, is over here on the zero frame, I'm going to with my transform, click the two red diamonds on the right. What does this do? Well, it sets a keyframe. It tells my timeline, which runs here from zero, frame zero to frame 150. It says whenever you're at frame zero, that object, the transform, should be right here. Okay, fantastic. Now, around line 30, which I'm going to click my mouse so that I get the red line, which shows me where I am in my time. And I'm going to just, on my x-axis, move it to the right, to about right there. Now what's going to happen is, whenever I play this, it will move, it will move during the first second, my box out and into the screen. Now, quite simple, doesn't look great. We'll make some changes to make it look even better. One of those is to use the spline editor. You can see here on the right, I've enabled my spline panel by clicking in the top corner there where it says spline. And now I'm able to choose my nodes. In this case, I'm choosing the transform node. And I'm gonna modify the path at which it travels. And so this shows you uh, the distance that it travels and the speed at which it's traveling over time. Time being here at the top and the, the percent of change on the left. Now, what am I gonna do? Well, I will highlight the two points in question here. I'm going to hit F, which creates an ease in and an ease out. And I'm even going to make this a little bit more dramatic by using these file handles. Boom. And maybe here I will sharpen that up just a touch. There we go. So now if I go back, you'll see it's going to kind of zip into place. That adds a lot more character to it, kind of makes it look better. You'll notice in that original, that there were multiple colors flying in and there were even logos and graphics and whatnot. So why don't we add some stuff to this? To do that, I'm going to shift and spacebar again to get up my select tool menu. And here on the left, I've got my transform highlighted, my transform node, which means this will add it after that. I'm going to type a merge. So I will merge. And into this merge, I'm going to add shift spacebar background. So we said we wanted some more of those squares or those rectangles. Now I've got it. Now what did I do wrong here? Well, when I added my background, it adds it to a default 
the size of my canvas. Unfortunately, that's not what we want, right? So I could copy and paste attributes from here to make sure that it will end up to be the same size. I'm going to copy it and right click on that and go paste settings. That changed the color, but it didn't change the size. Why not? Ah, size is managed by my transform. So I shift spacebar with my background to highlighted and type transform. There we go. Got my transform. Again, I'm going to right click on transform. I'm going to copy. I'm going to right click on transform too. Paste settings. Boom. Same color, same size. So you may ask yourself, wait a minute, why was that solid blue? It's not supposed to be that big anymore. We transformed it. But look where we are in the node tree. Here on the node graph with the one dot showing in viewer one, it's showing me the full background. But if I go to transform one and show it, there we go. Now it's shrunk down. Now we know we don't want it to be that same color. We're going to make it a different color. That's one of the resolve colors they use. We're not doing that. All right. Something like a really dark blue. And as we've got this stacked, I want you to notice the color of the merge nodes. See the blue there? Uh, the green? So you got your green arrow coming in as the foreground. You got your yellow arrow coming in as the background. In this case, what we've got is the dark background over top of the light background. If we wanted to do that in reverse, we would just switch the arrows. And now we're going to have the light one over the dark one, like that. To see the merge, I can put it up on the first viewer. We're going to go back to dark on top for fun. OK, that way we can use a lighter text and it will pop. Next, hey, speaking of that text, where does that go? Well, let's play back and see what we've got. Right now, because we copied the transform, it's an exact copy of, oh yeah. All right, it's an exact copy of the spline movement that we put into it with our keyframing. I want to change that a touch because I don't want it to be covering it. That doesn't work, does it? Okay, so I'll click on my transform. I go back up. Remember, it's keyframe, but I can use these little arrows to get it going in different directions. I'm going to start my first keyframe position a little further away. I'll go to my last keyframe position, and I'm going to move it back a touch as well. Next thing I'm going to do is look at my spline editor for just transform two by unchecking transform one. And I'm going to change this, not because I thought the first one sucked or anything, but just because I want it to be a little different. And you'll see why. There we go. All right. So now let's go back and see what we get. OK, so it was different. You can see there's various spots where it zooms ahead of the of the blue and ends up. obscuring it in the end. I don't necessarily want that. So I'm going to pull this back down. This was moving it further along. There we go. All right. Let's see what we get here. There we go. So in the long run, we'll have the, the light blue coming out from under it. I want some more light blue out from under it as we're coming out. So let's take a look at both those transforms and we can see exactly what's happening. This one, it, the dark blue is moving faster than the light blue. So let's Grab that dark blue here at one point, add a point to it. I'm going to zoom it. Let's go crazy. We're going to zoom it fast and then we're going to slow it down, even retract it a touch. Woo! I'm going to go crazy with this stuff. There we go. Let's see what happens here. This is going to be funky. Oh, yeah. So it actually snapped back pretty hard. I don't need it to go that hard. These locking splines are fun. This might be a good look. All right. See what happens here. Oop, kind of catches up. It's not magical, but it's working uh, somewhat. You could play with these things all day, and you might if you want to get a certain look. That's not the look I want, but we're going to keep moving on so you can see what we do to add text to this picture. Again, we need to put something on top of something else. So we're going to go back to text, to a text node. I like text plus because you can add decorators to it later. And here with the text, same thing. I'm now going to merge it on top using the green or foreground. I'm going to play that merge on that. All right. Here we're going to say John Contridge. We'll jump over to my Playfair channel font, Playfair Display, which is one that Saudi picked out for me and I've really ended up liking. I go to the second tab here, and now I can move along my name 
Oof. As usual, it is too long. This happens all the time. I'm not a big guy. My high school letterman jacket said Dotridge in like a rainbow instead of just across the back. Yeah. I know. Tough problems. Okay, so there we go. I shrunk it down a touch, and now it matches a little bit better. But I also have a logo for this channel, so let's shrink it down just a touch more. Alternatively, obviously, I could go back and make the rectangles bigger. And I'm going to move it over again just a touch. Now, we will have to keyframe this into place. But this is my final spot where I want to end. And I'm going to intentionally, right about here in my timeline, freeze a keyframe in here on the location of it. Now I'm going to work backwards. And this is kind of a trick to make sure you end up where you want to be. I'm going to work backwards and pull this off the screen to the left. Now that's linear, meaning it's just one straight line and you can identify it right here. Over time, it moves the exact amount, same amount over time. I'm going to bend it out just a little bit because, hey, why not? Let's go crazy. So let's see what that looks like. I mean, we can play around all we want. Good. What I like about that is it does not, it does not um, run behind or go in front of this, uh, these rectangles. It's always sitting on top of it, which is important to me. The next thing I want to do is add yet another effect to this, and that would be, let's say we want to get an image in here. How would we add a picture? Well, we know we want to put something on top of something else, so we're going to use a merge. There we go. Now we know that the green arrow going into the merge node is the top, and the yellow is the bottom. I'll go to my media pool. I know that in my template, so this is my DaVinci Resolve template I use for YouTube, you can see that video up above. I'll pull my media that I want to use down onto the screen and I can put it into my merge. Now this is where it gets interesting. It put it full size right there in the middle of my frame. We know that's not where I want that, right? Nope, where I want it is going to be transformed, as you guessed, by a transform node. So now with my transform, I'm going to transform it to be the right height. Um, I can do that with my size here, pull it down, I'm going to pull it over into the location where I want it to end up. X left over, X Y, y down. Obviously, I need it to be a little bit smaller. I'll hit Control and the up arrow to zoom in. Now I can really get it positioned where I want it. It's about the right height. I think it should go down again just to be centered. There we go. Alt and or Control and the wheel. It's different than your timeline when you're scrolling. Control and the wheel on your mouse back out. Alternatively, you can use these presets up here to fit or percentages. And now you can see this is where I want my end state to be. To keyframe my logo, I'll go to the exact point that I have keyframed. Let's see where we are. We have a keyframe on it already. I'm going to put it right there and exact point I have with my name. And then I'm going to go backwards in time to the first node. And I'm going to drag this over to the left. Follow. Okay, that's pretty good. I think I'm going to go a little bit more left on the start so that it starts further away. There we go. Play through it, and boom. Okay, that all locks into place right at the same time. I like it. There you have it. Send me a link or write a comment below. Let me know what you've done with this information. I'd love to see what you create. Otherwise, thanks for watching. If it helped you, give me a like and please subscribe. See you next time.